Hello, welcome to our podcast. I'm the only one who's actually on. Oh, are we recording now? No, we're not. not. We actually are. But are no, we? really, we are. Are we? Yeah. Are we? 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 I swear to God, I will turn this podcast around if you don't stop that. Is the podcast Dad, over yet? are we there yet? <laughs> are we there yet? Is the podcast over yet? Are we recording? <laughs> yes. Oh. Hello and welcome to another <laughs> episode of Tudor. I hardly know her. It's not just another episode. It's a special episode. Because Garrett's actually here in person for like the first am, time in how long? I can touch his face with my feet if I wanted. Yeah, but you're kind of sitting too far away and that's kind of gross. <laughs> but not only is it special <laughs> because Garrett's here, it's, it's also special because we're not going to have any obnoxious beeping in the background the entire time. <laughs> yes, I'm live in the Tudor studio. In the the Tudio. The Tudio in the... <laughs> Su su studio, su su studio. None of that oh. got picked up because you're not even talking to the microphone. What? <laughs> it's <laughs> right there. You're leaning too far. Yeah, you need to like be making out with your microphone, Garrett. Pretend. <laughs> yeah, you actually need like right in front of you. Ladies. Pick up. Also, you need to make sure that there is a little bit of space between your mic and the pop screen. There. I wish I just had my napkin holder. <laughs> there you go. That's perfect. Just like. Uh. Su, su, studio. <laughs> That's a su, su, studio test to make sure the mics are working. Is that something you do at work? Yeah. Because you're a big time me director now? Yes, I am. I'm the production director. Garrett's I, cool, guys. I, I have recently taken on a new position at my work and. I'm the production director for all the uh, production that comes into our radio stations. I'm I think, excited about it. I think we talked about that last time, but I'm just so happy. Mm -hmm. It's freaking awesome. It's reasons like, and here's the thing, because because I can do that now, I'll be able to be in the studio more often. I'm so excited for you to be in the studio. <laughs> that is the official name. <laughs> <laughs> the studio studio. No, just the studio. Uh, what about the su su studio? That's more than nine seconds. Like Phil Collins can, he can sue the shit out of us now. Probably. Mm -hmm. He's just traveling the internet, looking for people who are using his songs too much. You know what? I don't think it'll matter. He's got all that Tarzan money. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Uh. Man, you know what? Be do you think? Do you think Disney could ever make a, a cartoon about the Tudors? Like like a lighthearted musical. Well, they did it with Hunchback of Notre Dame and that ends with that in in the book say, ends ma with majority of the stuff they're based on are very, very dark anyways. Yeah. Like like the, the real little mermaid, that one's pretty fucked up. Yeah, she turns into sea foam because Eric marries another woman. And is isn't it when like her fins like when she gets legs, like her fins split open and there's yeah. like blood everywhere. And then uh Cinderella, the stepsisters literally hack off parts of their foot to fit in the bloody shoe. Oh god, I love that. That's so fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> so I think they could do a tutor. Who which which tutor would we I don't think it could be Henry the Eighth. I don't think there's any. I don't think even Disney could make six wives acceptable. They'll find a way. I think Elizabeth the First would be the the focus, ignoring that whole potentially a bastard thing. Okay. It'd be a love story about her and no, Robert. no, no, no. It's about it's about the two boys <laughs> who were kidnapped, <laughs> and, and they're helped out by like a talking I don't know like yes. a bird or something. Uh, no, it can't be a bird. It'd have to be something like a what's what's an English a very English animal? A dog. I'm picturing a badger with a top hat. <laughs> <laughs> a badger with a bowler. Uh, somebody please make us fan art of this. <laughs> Disney art. I like the idea of a badger with a bowler being their buddy. <laughs> and who voices the bowler badger? Simon Pegg. <laughs> I was going to say Hugh Laurie, but I like Simon Pegg as well. <laughs> no, I like Simon Pegg. I think Hugh Laurie would be the... Uh, the villain? No, no, no. I think Hugh Laurie would be the, like house. the good old helpful man. Uh, who would be the villain? If you say Tom Hiddleston, I'll punch you. <laughs> the villain. Who would be the villain? He'd drive up in his jacket. It couldn't be Tim, Tim Curry. That's too on the nose. Who has not been a good Disney villain? Well, okay. Who has not been a Disney villain? Hmm. Samuel motherfucking Jackson. Yes. I think Sam L. Jackson needs to be the villain. Richard the Third. 
All right. <laughs> and on that note, what are we talking about today? I'm I like, have no clue what we're even talking about. We are talking about spies. <laughs> That's our new. Uh, which one of you guys wants to make the James Bond song for this episode? No, 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 no. <laughs> no, I mean like Adele did Skyfall and like I mean like that. Tudas. Is that Tudas? Oh God, please stop. Macy okay. Gray. We're done. We're done. <laughs> Okay, we're gonna talk. We're gonna talk. We're, okay, we're, okay, one one more request for fan for fan submissions. Somebody, if if you've got some singing talent, if you don't have singing talent, because I mean, fuck, look at me. <laughs> look, every time I sing on the show, they can't show, look at you. That's the purpose of the podcast, Garrett. They can look at my, my little cartoon face. <laughs> make make your <laughs> own fake that. little tutor spy theme song. song. Yeah, I like that. I want to hear it. Record Sean Connery it. is Henry VIII. Oh, or oh, Jeremy. <laughs> <laughs> He's too Scottish. Even they wouldn't accept that. It seems you've lost your head. <laughs> he, but he played in in um, Robin Hood. He played I King, know. King Lion. You guys, our cat is being so cute. She's like playing with a fuzzy and flipping out. Oh, wait. Now she's sitting beneath Jeff's chair. She's, she was on Jeff's chair. Yeah, she, she was, was Jeff. Jeff. He had to forcibly evict her. I hate it when that happens. Okay. You ready to talk talk Tudor? Yes. Tudor talk in the studio? Garrett wants fresh breath for this episode. I don't want it uh, to translate over into the podcast form. It's you just, just don't want it to reverberate back into your face. You, that's 100% <laughs> true. Okay. So With let's, a mouthful of orange Tic Tacs, I'm ready to learn. Let's go. I'm ready to talk. Queen Elizabeth, she has TikTok. spies. <laughs> go away. <laughs> go to your room. <laughs> Elizabeth had spies, and they did a good job, and she didn't die from assassinations, and that's it. The end. Episode's hey, done. The spies were, must have been really good because I didn't know they even had spies. <laughs> That's, That's how secret they were. It was like in Futurama. <laughs> like if you're doing everything right, no one will know you've done anything, anything at all. <laughs> Which episode is that? That's the one where Bender is a god and he's got all the people living on him. He meets God. And he meets oh, God. Yeah. You're doing so well until everyone died. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I remember that one. That's a good one. Okay. So Elizabeth had a spy network. She built the original spy net network, the original surveillance. Am I five? Yeah. I'm not kidding. Oh. Yeah. So my six is later. <laughs> so you guys are going to love this episode. So the spies were called watchers and it was her network that intercepted letters. They cracked codes and they captured people who were plotting against her. Right. That's what they're, those that group of guys are in Buffy. Giles <laughs> was a watcher they from are. England. Oh my God. That's probably what it is. That's awesome. Now. And also John D was into the occult so that's probably related okay so she had the original surveillance state she was the one who created the whole i mean yes it was under her reign but it was really francis walsingham but um garrett's on his phone no because um i actually saw this on reddit the other day somebody posted a 17th century assassin's poison kit <gasps> disguised as a book oh shit and, and we, we can post this on uh on our social media, but it's so fucking Oh, cool. shit. It's got little cabinets all labeled with different poisons and then like a little diagram of the human body. It's it's really cool looking. I would love to have something like that. I just screenshotted that. Can you text me that picture? Yeah. Holy shit, that was awesome. I hope it's authentic. I don't give a shit if it is. It's cool. <laughs> Catch Jeff. No. Oh, God. <laughs> this is terrible. You are bad at catching my phone. That's why I'm not, not a sports person. What did you expect? <laughs> he doesn't play the sports ball, Garrett. Anyway, back to... Okay. So, uh, the main issue was that Elizabeth wasn't Catholic and all the Catholics wanted her dead. So, she wasn't safe and a lot of people wanted her on the throne. So, when I Googled just Tudor or spies, the first three... Google suggestions were about the Babington plot, the Throckmorton pot and plot pot and the Rodolphi plot. The dolphin S pot. The Dolphy the dolphin <laughs> plot. I can't get it. <laughs> the Rodolphi plot. Um all of those I was like expecting them to be slightly different, but literally each Wikipedia summary is the same. 
blah, the blah, blah, blah plot was an effort to assassinate Queen Elizabeth I and put her cousin, Mary, Queen of Scots, on the throne. Mm. Each one. So she definitely needed this spy network. So there are a couple of people that are important in this. There's John D. William Cecil and Francis Walsingham. Um, John D. was her most trusted spy in one of her, her BFFs, and he was the one who was involved in the occult, so probably created the, the Watchers thing. Um, that, d- that does sound like something from, from fictional media, like a secret group of assassins known as the Watchers. It really does. Protecting the queen from evil different... Sort With of the cult. John D. the alchemist. Uh, so he... Like John D. the genie. <laughs> <laughs> Uh. <laughs> anyway. That was real stupid. I'm sorry. But I got a good laugh, laugh. At you guys. So, John D. Fuck you. I'm going to think of that now. Was John D. Mecca so- like a high. Mecca like a highness <laughs> is dead. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> He was an alchemist, and he was really involved in the occult. He would try and do magic-y, alchemy things, and <laughs> stop. I'm trying to think of what the secret word of the day is, <laughs> <laughs> and then scream in the middle of the podcast, <laughs> but that might ruin the show, so let's continue. Uh, anyway, it was, so do you guys remember what I, we're, we're going to have to do a whole episode on the Spanish Armada, but do you remember anything about it? That's the... The Spanish Navy came flying at England, and Elizabeth defeated them, and she's remembered for that. Yes. Okay. <laughs> yes, that is history. I was conflating that with uh, the battle at King's Landing. <laughs> <laughs> that is not Which history. one burst in the green flames? Elizabeth. <laughs> okay. She burst in the green flames. That was really brutal. She turned to a dragon. Secret God. history. Um, <laughs> Queen Elizabeth was Maleficent. <laughs> so, uh, apparently, John D. had been able to see the future, and he saw that there were storms that were going to scatter the Spanish Armada, which is really what helped um, Elizabeth defeat them. You know, the fact that lightning struck. He and was just a good meteorologist. <laughs> he was... <laughs> He was the original Chuck Lofton, if you're from Indiana. He's the original Al Roker. <laughs> Actually, seven day forecast. He is the original. of the high seas. <laughs> <laughs> Hope you don't 42. plan on doing any military excursions this weekend. We're expecting a, a hit of the plague later this evening. <laughs> Waves of plague will just riddle through northern England. Don't go there. The plague of rats is going to come down from the northeast, <laughs> but uh, around 3 o'clock, it'll be nice and sunny out and a great way to enjoy your Sunday. And don't church. forget to not bathe because they probably help encourage infestation. But John D. was the original James Bond. He signed his letters 007. Wait, what? I'm huh? not kidding. His letters to Elizabeth were signed 007. Ian Fleming, the author of James Bond, was like, that's fucking cool, and made it James Bond's thing. Yeah. So I told you. Isn't that cool? The original 007. John. John D. (laughs) (laughs) The G D. My name's D. John D. I'll give you the G if you know what I mean. Oh, God. <laughs> Sean, now it's Sean Connery. It absolutely is. Um, Okay, so the thing is, spies in that time weren't really vetted. There was no, like, really cool Kingsman-type process that <laughs> happened where they, you like... like sp- you, like, sneak up on people. Yes. All right, gotcha. <laughs> Are you able to keep a secret? Yes, I am. I trust you. You look like a trustworthy <laughs> fellow. What a job. Uh, so they weren't really vetted. It was kind of just like, I want to be a spy. So like if you went to John D and you're like, hey, I heard this happened. He's like, you got a job. Um, so some of them were actually pretty loyal to Elizabeth and to the Protestant reign. But some just wanted money and they were greedy and therefore they were dangerous because it's easy to sway them. And then, you know, they were probably also murderers. So they kind of had cool jobs because some of them would go to other countries and report on the politics and the military happenings of those countries. So that's kind of cool where you're like, I'm just a lowly peasant, but I want to see the world. I'll spy for Elizabeth. Um, I want an excuse to go to Germany and Spain. And but 
Yeah, right. In France. Pretty much that. But some <laughs> of them kind of had shit jobs because they were just like, all right, just walk the streets. What? Yeah, just, just eavesdrop on a bunch of people. Pretty much. Except that did one time work out because that's how the Babington plot was was uh, discovered. <laughs> There's a guy at a pub and he's like, I heard two guys just like, hey, want to kill the queen? Yeah. <gasps> yeah. You are not far off. Oh, my God. So these guys were in a pub <laughs> talking <laughs> it's about. England. There's only two places you can be, the shitter or the pub. <laughs> <laughs> So these guys were in a pub creating plans to assassinate Elizabeth and put Mary Queen of Scots on the throne. And this walker just like was in there and he heard and he's like, huh? Tell someone that he he reported it to Walsingham, who was important. And we'll talk about him in just a minute. Um, And Walsingham then made sure that Mary would have been accused of treason by allowing the plot to go forth just a little bit yeah so that he could get her handwriting saying she actually uh wrote to spain saying uh are you guys gonna invade anytime soon i really want to be queen so that kind of sealed her fate but then sometimes um uh spies were sent to capture catholic priests because you know no catholics so okay (laughs) waterboard them they did get with water. their own holy holy water. <laughs> they holy water boarded them. <laughs> um, so Sir Francis Walsingham is the most important one. He's literally the spy master, which sounds like a movie from the eighties. <laughs> that sounds like a Bond title. He's the original M. He managed the spy network and hired the spies. He was essentially essentially spy human resources. <laughs> like so they'd be like, I got a work injury. <laughs> Do I take this to um, you? James Bond keeps wanting to touch me all the time. <laughs> Should I be concerned? <laughs> it's best to let him finish. You're out of the spy group. <laughs> so Sir Francis Walsingham was the spy master. Um, and he just kind of made sure everybody did what they were supposed to do. So a little bit about him. He is the most important person to talk about right now besides maybe Elizabeth. Um, He was fluent in French and Italian when he was growing up. He went to school and he became fluent in that. Um, And then when his family was very, very Protestant. And when Mary Tudor came to the throne, he had to like leave because she was super Catholic. So he ran away. And um, then when Elizabeth became queen, he came back to England and he was introduced to William Cecil, who was Elizabeth's BFF. And William Cecil offered him a position at a court, and he was just 36 years old. So, uh, guys, we are still young enough to become spy masters. Woo! Our dreams are not dead yet. All we my still years have of time. eavesdropping on people finally pays off. Mm-hmm. Man, that being middle child of uh, 11 super helpful now. <laughs> um, I know how to go walk around unnoticed. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> That was a good one. <laughs> Middle child syndrome, it's a thing. Hold on. <laughs> Emily, Emily went off back my tea break coffee. is brought to you by to drink coffee. TikTok. Oh, should we do an ad break? Are we doing that now? Do you want to? Hey guys, get loot crate. <laughs> or else. Yeah, Actually, no, I like this. Let's keep it going. <laughs> hey, do you guys know what loot crate is? Do you like nerdy shit? Is, Come to your door every month, and you're like, why do I have this? Oh, right. It's a <laughs> subscription box, and it's pretty cool because you get to pick and choose what kind of nerdy stuff you want. I have got a lot of Loot Crate stuff in my house. Like, I don't actually have Loot Crate yet. I keep being to, but I have a lot of stuff from Loot Crate. It's perfect if you're, like, ever just in the mood for a specifically nerdy thing. So you can go on to Loot Crate. You sign up for a subscription. You can choose between a bunch um, and then you'll get a box of nerdy shit sent directly to you. Are all these copy points accurate? Yes. Okay. I believe so. I did not know. You can pick and choose the type <laughs> of plan you want. I what really is this? That. Tell me more. Well, that's pretty much it. Well, uh, okay. Sign Wait, how do people sign up for it through us? Mm-hmm. If you want to... Get your own loot crate. Go to trylootcrate.com slash tutor and you can get yours and you can choose from a bunch of different options. So do that, guys. Do it. What's you, what is it you said last time, Garrett? Uh, 
Get it, buy it, loot it, love it. Yeah. Please. Oh my God, please. <laughs> please, oh God. We're desperate. Uh, Who else hey, we got? Let's do Audible. Audible? Audible? Yeah. Audible to come, what's that? <laughs> do you want to listen to things in your ear holes? Do you like things in your ears? Uh, hey guys. Do you hate, what's your, le- what's your least favorite part about reading books? The reading part. <laughs> <laughs> that is that is actually true. Like I I cannot follow along with a book anymore. I used to I used to be a like voracious reader when I was younger. Garrett's like, a liar. He doesn't know how to read. I shut the Garrett fuck up. is shamed. Uh if you also don't know how to read like Garrett, you should try <laughs> audible.com. Look, I can tell you right now that this box is tic tac. <laughs> <laughs> uh so he also picks up He just recognized the label. It was made in Canada. <laughs> <laughs> and its ingredients include sugar, <laughs> malodexter, tetar. What the hell? And natural. Okay, well, if you don't want Garrett reading you ingredients flavors. of Tic Tacs uh, and you want an actual uh, extra book in your life, you guys should try Audible. I use it every single day. When you're not listening to us, go listen to a book. Yeah, finish our podcast first. Yeah, but, I appreciate that. Uh, Audible has tens of thousands of titles that you can choose from and you can find any genre um you can choose from a couple different audible options i get one book credit a month and i just make that work even those i really should up it to two or three a month because i listen to them all the time but it's great for commutes it's great for cleaning the house um i know i like to put audible or audiobooks on when i'm cleaning it's just an extra way to fit a book into my life so you um, commute a lot. I know that's really handy. It's, it's yes. I used to have a job where I had to drive for eight hours for a day. Yeah. And I had to find things to like entertain myself in the car because music could only go so far. So at least a book is a good distraction to, to keep me yes. <laughs> occupied. So you especially should... when they're like 48 hours long. They're like, cool. I have two days worth of a book. Yeah. So uh, guys, go to audibletrial.com slash tutor and you can get a 30 day free trial and uh, enjoy some free audiobooks. That's what first got me into it. I got Amy Poehler's Yes, Please. But since then, I have gotten any kind of book my heart desires. I'm currently reading 1Q84, which is amazing. It's really enjoyable. But I've also listened to some Alison Weir audiobooks. I've gotten Stephen King. It's It runs the gamut. It has One everything you I could want. I recommend is listen to The Martian. Yes. Because the guy who does the reading for Martian is really good at it. Yeah, it's a great book. So, guys, audibletrial.com slash tutor. Get a free 30-day trial. Enjoy your new audiobook. Enjoy your new audiobook life. Audible. Stick that in your ear. (laughs) Lay off my ear holes. Uh, Back to tutors, guys. Okay, thank God. Okay, so after Francis Walsingham was offered a job, it was pretty baller. I wish I was so good at being sneaky that people would just be like, here's money for sneaking. <laughs> I'm so sneaky. <laughs> I'm such an untrustworthy sneaky. fellow. People just start paying me to do that. <laughs> um, so in 1573, he was officially appointed the Secretary of State. Today, that translates to the Foreign secret- secretar- Secretary. <laughs> Who can't read well. now? <laughs> secretary and the head of MI5 and MI6. So... More James Bond shit. So he really was the M. Is it really an MI5 though? I don't know. I've only ever heard of MI6. I was just making that up as I was. No, there is an MI5. Oh, because I assume like there is an MI5. I just don't know anything about they're it. They're just so, not like, as sneaky as I MI6. Think, I think MI5 is like FBI and MI6 is like CIA. What's or it, what's it stand for? Mission Impossible Five. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> MI6 is the Secret Intelligence Services. Not that service. secret. We know about it. it. MI5 is the Security Talk Service. Talking to your microphone. Oh, I think MI5. I think MI5 is like a Secret Service, and MI6 is like CIA. Gotcha. So I think I, I really do think it's just different levels of S- secret <laughs> <laughs> secrets. Yeah, sure. Whatever. Your clearance level is only MI6. So, oh, Seven now we know the P- oh, on Wikipedia has the address. <laughs> wow, you want to make a trip to MI5? <laughs> <laughs> How'd you find us? Wikipedia, <laughs> you guys are online. Oh, fuck. That's Jerry, not- Jerry from IT. I told you not to list that. I found you on our Facebook page. Here's the thing <laughs> that's how good they are, like, they can list their address. 
And still not give up a goddamn secret. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, Francis Walsingham did the same thing. He went to ye old Wikipedia <laughs> and typed in Actually, Tower it was just, of it, London. Wasn't that just like a community board where people could just write whatever they wanted? <laughs> <laughs> For and those r- who knew how to write, little notes on the side, source needed. For those who knew how to write, <laughs> uh, so he expanded the spy agency. He got fifty spies, and he actually started paying some of them out of his own pocket because he understood the value of it. So he ended up having spies in France, Spain, the Low Countries, Germany, United Provinces, and and Turkey. So they were kind of all over. And um, being a spy was, I mean, I know I always said it's just about being sneaky, but you. There's a lot in it that you have to be great at. So, you know, I know we Kinda talked about the different levels. Intuitive what's going on. So there were code breakers and they'd be the ones who got the letters that were written in code. And they had to have a deep understanding of Latin and all the other uh, major languages of Europe. Deep understanding, not just where's the bathroom, but like actual understanding of their alphabets and all that stuff. So, um... It was a really cool, that one was a really cool job. So that was just one of the levels of spy-iness. Um, <clears throat> so Walsingham was so bomb that one time a trainee priest who was like, I'm going to be a Catholic priest, came over from the continent and he ran into Walsingham. And Walsingham was like, you know, you should work for us. And the priest was like, okay. <laughs> so he actually. I was going to be, or, I don't know, a war for, no, a worshiper of God, but <laughs> okay. I guess I will spy on people instead. <laughs> to be fair, if somebody told me, hey, do you want to continue down your current career path or do you want to be a fucking spy? Oh, man, like Archer? Yeah. Is that what Archer was originally going to be, a priest? I don't know. <laughs> do you think Archer would have been a priest? Come on. Ew, no. Honestly, Ew. a priest, you could still be a priest because you know how much information you can get at people during the confessions? Um, <laughs> well, that's that's some... That's some gray area right there. Yeah, you that's where you're like, that's not cool. <laughs> Stop it, Jeff. So <laughs> He's going to be a spy. I don't think he really cares anymore <laughs> about the God part. <laughs> so Walsingham actually. I can spy for the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> actually, we're going to get to that later. So Walsingham um, got the priest to, what he did was the priest went up to Mary Queen of Scots and he was like, hey. I've got this super secret route set up so you can send secret letters. And actually Walsingham had set up that secret route and all the letters went to Walsingham. So he saw everything. He really didn't like Mary Queen of Scots. Um, so Walsingham was a badass. Um, Cecil, William Cecil, Elizabeth's BFF, said to him, quote, you have fought more with your pen than many here in our English Navy with their enemies. So that's pretty baller. Huh. I don't want to be. I guess the pen, pen really is mightier than the sword. <laughs> Back to Sean Connery. <laughs> More Sean Connery. Um, so, of course, not all the spies were loyal because they're fucking spies. <laughs> so What? They're William, untrustworthy? <laughs> so there was we one seen that William coming. Perry who was a spy for Elizabeth, but then he tried going to the Catholic Church and saying, hey, I want to spy for you. Well, shockingly, that was discovered, and he was tried and uh, drawn and quartered and executed and dead. He didn't like it. Um, and then there's one, and it makes me laugh. So this, he was a, mus- a musician, a scribe, and a spy for Henry VIII, which sounds like a, I want to see a movie about this. I'm picturing it in my head. So the, the guy's name was Petrus Alamire. And Alamire was a pun. Alamire. Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. So, Alamire. So, it was a pun because he was a musician. And now I just really want, like, to me, that's like naming someone like John Spyington. (laughs) Like, (laughs) not too subtle there. Well, like, I mean, James Bond had some ridiculous names. Ah, the, who I guess the villain was Goldmember. Gold member was gold not. finger then, but still not far off. Um, I mean, there are celebrities that have stupid ass nicknames. They're usually sports people, but like, Meta what if they're spies? What Meta World Peace? Yeah, what if he's a spy? That's a great name. That is. We all know Dennis amazing. Rodman is a spy. <laughs> uh, I, thought, I thought he was part of Men in Black. 
Yeah, he was an alien, wasn't he? I mean, that would explain so it's not very much. Not much of a disguise, much. but so um, Petrus Alamire, Petrus Spyington, um, he sp- spied for Henry VIII. So Elizabeth wasn't the only one who had spies; she just had set up the network. Um, he spied on Richard de la Pole, who was a potential other claimant to the throne that Henry didn't like. But then while he was spying on Richard de la, de la Pole, he was like, oh, he's actually a good guy. I don't want to do this anymore. And he just like dropped off the face of the earth. <laughs> so he like just stopped. He didn't come back to Henry's court. I think he didn't come back to England after 1516. Um, so he was well, kind this of a, place. I'm not cut yeah. out for all this spy stuff. So there were some other interesting spies. So there was a prioress in Scotland, which is, I th- I'm pretty sure it's a nun. Um, and her name was Isabella Hopringle. And she was spying. So she was buddies with uh, Margaret over in in Scotland. And she was sending Henry reports on Scottish troops. Um, It was discovered and she was almost executed. But then the queen was like, no, wait, I like her. So she didn't. And she continued sending Henry the reports. So maybe she should have been executed. Um, And then I'm so excited. It's possible that Christopher Marlowe, which is basically Shakespeare too, he's the less famous Shakespeare. He's like the third. He's like the third Heming Hemsworth brother to William to Liam and it's like Chris. In the movie Amadeus, there's the other composer who doesn't like Amadeus because he's more successful. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So Christopher Marlowe was potentially a spy for Walsingham. But also, Shakespeare may have been a spy for Walsingham. But also, William Shakespeare probably didn't exist. He was Queen Elizabeth. That's how secret. Queen Elizabeth spied on herself for Walsingham. There were five guys all named William Shakespeare. (laughs) They're all spies. I am William Shakespeare. Shakespeare. (laughs) Um, So, the thing is, though, about this time. So, we all know spying gets convoluted. But one of my favorite things is... Okay, so... There was a man named Stafford, and he was a younger brother of a more important Stafford. So Walsingham may have had the younger Stafford plot against Elizabeth I to frame Mary. So Stafford reported that he was approached by a French ambassador and then some rando to put gunpowder under Elizabeth's bed to assassinate her. Hmm. And then... um, he went to Walsingham, so he was implicated in the plot, but the French ambassador was cleared, and then nothing changed with Stafford. Walsingham continued to pair. So it's like it's it's possible that what happened was Walsingham said, Hey Stafford, could you make up this plot, bring me some fake evidence, and that way I can implicate Mary, Queen of Scots, and we can execute her. I, like I said, he really didn't like Mary, Queen of Scots. Um, this isn't directly related to the Tudors, but Catherine de Medici, who was alive during that time, she had a network of lady spies called the Flying Squadron. Mm. <laughs> what? Yeah. Were, do they even understand the concept of flying back then? <laughs> Birds flew. Falcons flew. <laughs> they understood it. It was all part of the spy shit. It's to throw you off. Um. Oh, I forgot to tell you. Francis Walsingham was in charge of torture. Like, he got to make sure they were torturing people. Um, So, a really cool thing is there is a book called The Book of Secret Intelligences. Not very secret if there's a book about it. (laughs) These guys really suck to be in spies back in the day. No kidding. I I think all of Britain is just really shitty at being spies. That's why they had to invent James Bond. They're like, oh, finally a good (laughs) one. And he's not even that good of a spy. He just fucks and kills everything he sees. (laughs) That's the best kind of spy. (laughs) He's just like a lion. Um, no, the book of secret intelligences was like the, the encyclopedia for the spies. Um, it had all the codes, the agents and the alphabets that they used. So it was like, uh, what happened? What was the most recent the James Bond movie? Spectre. So it was like the, wait, was it Spectre? The one where, uh, Javier Bardem? That's Skyfall. That's Skyfall. And he threatened to release all the names yeah. of the agents. Yeah, Correct. It was like a non-digital that. <laughs> Okay. I'll release so, so many pages of people's names. <laughs> Just throws it out a window. <laughs> Into the Thames. <laughs> what the hell is this paper? 
who the hell's this guy? Why do I care? And they feel about their business. Like, huh, uh, I don't really care. So he had that book of secret intelligences. <laughs> well, and just dr- it was well, just on a horse riding through town just yelling out people's names. <laughs> Bob's a spy. <laughs> Who cares? <laughs> I don't know what that phrase means. Uh, yeah, so that happened. Um, I think I may have said everything that I needed to say. Cecil, walls and die. Do they also die. invent like special like m- mechanisms and devices to help them spy? I feel that's just a big part of spy fiction. I mean, we I talked about that cool poison cabinet. I mean, I, but these are more I'll, spies as opposed to assassins, correct? Well, assassins well. were spies and spies were assassins. They plotted gunpowder, treason, and plot. Um, was, was it was it more spying than? I mean, I'm not saying like they had some crazy device. There were that, like, assassination attempts. It wasn't attempts. like Assassin's Creed. I'm more thinking. No, but now I want an Assassin's to... Creed type thing. Like you don't want Assassin's Creed. N- no, I do want to play it. No, but now I'm trying to figure out. What kind of cool tools they could have used back then? I mean, they could have done stuff from learning ways to more eavesdrop, like how today we use like the cannon string kind of thing. No. That's where it came from. Okay, uh, your tutor <laughs> fact: um, spies <laughs> back in the Tudor times uh, invented the can, the cans with string on it to easily mm, spy. Yes, that's <laughs> very subtle too. <laughs> hey, Elizabeth, catch! <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was my can sound. That was a good can sound. Theater of the mind. That was actually a TikTok. <laughs> Foley work is fascinating. This Theater episode of, of Tutor, I hardly know her, is brought to you by Tic Tacs. <laughs> Theater of the mind. Um. Yes. So spying and their I, their biggest tools were like ways to crack ciphers and codes. Um, and the easiest way Dakota was to look rings, at shit like that. <laughs> well, the easiest way was to look at the da most Vinci code. the the most used letter in the alphabet is E. So they would just try and find something that was the most used letter. That and then they that would. Makes a lot of I sense. used to do the. I think in the newspaper when I was in high school, they had a little thing where it was like a phrase with different jumble up letters. And you had to try to solve what it said. Like oh, they gave oh you, the jumble, and then you, you'd have the big jumble at the end. They, they Jeff's you, a spy. They, they give you like one clue, like this letter equals this, and so you have to oh. come up with the rest of the message. Was when you I'm thinking about the junior jumble from yeah. the comics. Oh, that's the spy. A really bad one. Uh, so there's a book that I saw that I want to read. It's called The Watchers: The Secret History of the Reign of Elizabeth the First, and it's by Stephen Alford. And some of this information come came from an article that quoted that book. So I do want to get that. So if you want to read more about that, check out The Watchers: The Secret History of the Reign of Elizabeth the First. And that's it. Now you guys entertain me. I'm tired. I'm tired too. Okay, I'm too. Gary oh and I got god. properly spooked this weekend. Oh my god, we watched so many scary things. It's actually kind of funny because we watched, we just saw the movie Kingsman too. We did. You guys saw a lot of movies. We this did. Weekend. We've seen a lot of movies. We went this and saw weekend. two movies this weekend. We saw two movies at the theater, and That's then nothing. Gary and we I had a watched. day. We saw. We went to the theater twice, two different theaters to see, a, see yeah. movies. Yeah. We like movies. Uh, Garrett and I this weekend watched some scary stuff, and it scared us. So. Which will then tie in eventually to things we're doing later this month of October. Well, they already know. We're going to do a... Um, we'll do a... We're going to do an episode about the ghosts, Tudor ghosts, because there are so many stories. I'm super excited. I'm going to set the mood. We're going to make it all dark in here. Oh, also... We're going to turn on spooky music. We just realized on October 5th... It's our one-year anniversary. It's our one-year anniversary of yeah. the podcast. From now... Uh well this episode's going to go up on like the twenty seventh so almost 27th. exactly a week from now so a week from if you're listening to the podcast it's a week from tomorrow so October fifth is our one year anniversary and we are super duper excited that it's so weird that we've made it that long yep I know like we feel kind of cool I'm just really glad I forced this uh interest on figure one of us would have just given up by now the real question is how much do jeff and i remember jeff way more than me Ooh, let's do that as a special that'd be kind of oh fuck i'm gonna lose no (gasps) oh trivia time trivia time we're doing it we're doing it we're doing it it's gonna be fun maybe we could do wait wait maybe we can do it with our listeners i wonder if there's a way we could do a trivia time with our listeners i can make a quiz and put it up no, I want to do it with you guys. It'd be funny with you guys. Okay. Uh, but win. now I want to do a quiz and 
make a prize for a listener. That's going to be our one year anniversary thing. What what we do is Jeff and I play for different people. We we pull two names out of a hat. And oh, I like that. I play for one, Jeff plays for one. Okay, I'm I like that. Very very sorry if you get me. Okay, no, we're doing that. <laughs> okay, so this is what we're gonna do. I'm gonna put up a post on Facebook, and if you want to be entered for a chance to win something, it's probably gonna be a book, but maybe it'll be like a cool tutor. If you want that cool. Um, changing tutor mug or something i'll figure out a prize and i'll post it with this put your name in the comment and then i'll draw two random ones out of a hat or whatever i'll let those people know and then we'll do a trivia episode and whoever wins jeff or garrett their corresponding listener wins the prize i was literally just thinking the other day about how like I, at times i feel like i need to go back and re-listen to old episodes just you guys can do that i won't blame you if you want to do that this I can't because I'll be too busy listening to my audiobooks on audible.com. <laughs> <laughs> and then also, if you guys want, um, you can, well. We'll figure it out. We'll yeah. Figure it out. No, we're going to make this awesome. Oh, I like this idea. Okay. That's going to be our, our one year anniversary. We're going to do like an anniversary month thing, I think. Because we've had a couple ideas for things for anniversary stuff to celebrate our awesomeness. We do. So we're going to do all of those. But this is definitely going to happen. So I'm going to put something up on Facebook. And I will, I will send a spiffy prize to the winner. Maybe it'll be like an Anne Boleyn bee necklace or a crown ring. Like with a bumblebee or something? No, like? Anne Boleyn had a famous necklace where it was um, a gold letter B and then three pearls hung from the bottom of the B. It's a and famous diamonds necklace. diamonds in it. And there were no diamonds. It was it just a pearl. It looked like a dollar sign. No. <laughs> it was just a pearl necklace with a B. It, Stop it. it will look like she a pound a sign, Garrett. Uh, so I'll put up, maybe I'll put up a thing where you guys can vote on what you'd like. It'll probably be like a book, a coffee mug, and a necklace. And then I'll get the win- whoever wins, Garrett or Jeff, their corresponding person wins. This is fun. I am excited. Now I get to make trivia. Life is good. Oh, that music's going to be all over. And you guys are each going to have to write it down. I won't make it a thing where it's like. Who Whoever it does it first, you okay. guys get time to think about it because I know there's so much information. Oh, that's gonna be worse. Final, I, have to, I gotta remember how to spell names. Essay. Yeah, I'll th- <laughs> and then I want a written essay. Actually, I s- love the tutor so much that I thought that if I'd become a historian, I would become a teacher. I would become a professor, and I've considered essay topics I would assign the students. Well, where are your students? I don't have any. No, we are. Your oh, students. I thought you said where are your students? Oh my god, she would yeah, hate my weird. writing so much. No, I wouldn't. I don't care about writing style. To me, it's about what you're saying. No, with this specifically. Grammar-wise, I... I'll forgive you as long as you're not fucking stupid. I'm going to put commas everywhere. (sighs) Today, I learned how to use a comma. (laughs) Okay, guys. So, I think that's it for this episode. Um, Don't forget to follow us on Facebook at Just Tutor I Hardly Know Her. That's how you can enter this cool trivia contest. Um, And then the... Uh, Twitter handle is just at Tudor Know Her. Check us out there. We'll be sharing facts about what's been going on in Tudor history. Um, I retweet a lot. I share articles a lot in there. So go there. Rate and review us on iTunes. Tell us how awesome we are. Um, you can also tell us how terrible we are. But if you've made it this long and you think we're terrible, then what the fuck is wrong with you? Yeah, 41 episodes end to yeah, us guys, and you're still listening. Get your shit together. Uh, and that's it, right, guys? Anything else? I believe we're good. Any okay, cool. So until next time, right? Yep. Until next time. Divorce, beheaded, died. Divorce, beheaded, died, divorced, divorced, beheaded, beheaded survived. survived. Goodbye. Goodbye. I think we're in sync that time because we're actually bye, in bye, the studio. Two, 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 I hate you both. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>